In this segment, we're going to talk about a really, really important theorem in fluid dynamics called Reynolds transport theorem. Okay, so this will be the basis for the conservation of mass, which is module five, conservation of momentum, module six, conservation of energy, module seven. So this is really important. Okay, once you know this, you simply apply it to different principles and you get yourself relevant basic conservation principle converts properties from Lagrangian to Eulerian reference frame okay we talked about the Lagrangian in the previous segments within module 4 and we said that hey this is when coordinate axis is fixed the fluid particle and it's moving with the flow and Eulerian is the one that we are more familiar with. I have my coordinate axis uh, placed outside the flow. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use those things plus I will use the definition of the control mass and control volume and try to relate things. I want to apply this for a 1D geometry. So in order to save time, I'm not going to draw real time. So I'm going to draw and come right back to you. This is t is equal to t1. You can call this t is equal to zero as well if you want. Okay, so it's an initial time. And what I what I do have here is that I have a nozzle, and you can see that it is non-deforming and it's stationary, right? I have an inlet area, and I have an inlet velocity. I have an exit area and exit velocity. Okay, it's fixed. And what I did here is I've selected an arbitrary volume in space, and I call this the control volume, and I abbreviated this with orange lines. And I also have a system or control mass which is coincident with each other. My question to you now is what will happen when t is equal to t1 plus delta t. Let's call this t2 for convenience. Okay. As I discussed in the previous module, what I do is I pick an arbitrary volume, and this is the volume, and I look at what is happening in here. Things will go over here, it will pass, etc. But I'm not changing my view. I'm stuck to these. Boundaries and what was the boundaries name for control volume control surface, right? So it's gonna stay here. So I actually draw this for you as well So look at the control volume what happens it is staying exactly where it's at, okay? But when I look at the control mass for what happens for the system is there was fluid particles over here, right? So then what happens is it kind of moves with the flow. I'm aligned with the system and note something system is like Lagrangian like reference frame I'm moving with the flow and the control volume over here look at it it's stationary so it's as if I have an origin or coordinate axis right outside the flow right over here okay so that distinction will be very important for the Reynolds transport theorem now I want to relate the system and the control volume so then let's go ahead and write this the system is equal to control volume for t is equal to t1 right because look at it that's my initiation point or the initial condition let's say that we have something called an extensive property of b or what is the purpose of introducing b is the this b is just a placeholder and as you will find out in module 5 this will be mass in module 6 that will be momentum in module 7 this will be energy this is the extensive property of the system at time one will be the CV right think about it because there's no distinction between the two right it's the same thing so obviously the CV and the system will have the same property let's write the same thing for t2 though there will be some changes t is equal to t1 plus delta t okay so this is the t2 basically and what will happen is my system moved to the right you can see from this purple color so it moved to the right and what happens is the fluid molecules left region 1, think about it, the fluid molecules associated with the system left region 1 and entered region 2, right? If you look at this uh, purple color, this 2 was not part of it, now it is. And 1 was part of it, now it's not. Fluid molecules or particles left region one that's the red one and entered 
region two well, not here one and two okay so I'm just I just rewrite what I said one minute ago so that particular property that we place is a P for the system at T2 obviously T1 plus delta T will be equal to if you think about it this will be the control volume of T2 so think about it the control volume of 2 is this orange one I need to add 2 and subtract 1 to obtain the system right so that's basically what I'm writing I need to add the region 2 at T2 minus B1 at T2 and what I would like you to also think about is if you want you can also look into this and call this B system T1 why I'll, I'll show you here we say that the system and the control volume is same for the T is equal to T1 if the control volume at T1 and T2 are the same and the system is equal to control volume at T1 then obviously B system T1 will be applicable here here as well so what I want to do is now I, I want to look at the uh, the change of B system over time so Delta B system okay see what happens over time so basically this becomes Delta B system Delta T will be I'm just gonna rewrite the definition of it how it changes over time so basically this is the definition of derivative right Delta T how it changes over a finite Delta T and go from there so what we said is look this look that so I'm gonna take this whole thing these three terms and I'm gonna plug this in here make sense it's the same thing so let's do that so if I do it you will see that this is gonna be B C V at T2 minus B1 T2 plus B2 T2 okay so that's this right this is this term I still didn't account for it so let me write it minus B system at T1 divided by per Delta T I said that remember BCV at T1 is equal to B system at for my convenience I'm gonna write it this way then it's gonna be B C V T2 I'm not doing anything new here B C V T1 divided by Delta T minus B1 T2 by Delta T plus B2 T2 by Delta T next step is to take this Delta T approaches zero right so think about it that is the definition of derivatives right so that's how we define the derivatives when so this becomes db system dt right so basically I'm going with the mathematics approach over here and well let's take the limit as time delta t goes to zero for the system okay so let's write this way limit delta t goes to zero delta b system pi delta t will be limit as delta t goes to zero for this what I'm writing right about BCVT2 minus BCVT1 by Delta T and then I'm gonna add I'm just gonna limit as Delta T goes to zero that's gonna be let's write this this way B2T2 divided by Delta T minus B1T2 by Delta T so far so good look I'm not doing anything fancy over here I just write that as Delta T goes to zero this is equal to as Delta T goes to zero this Delta T goes to zero this now I will be able to accomplish something as I mentioned this is the definition of derivative in the previous segment I talk about material derivative this will be material derivative or if you think about it this will be the derivative in the Lagrangian reference frame because the system is moving with the flow okay so now these things come together by definition right this is a material derivative let me call this basically db dt okay so that's what it is about this becomes db dt um, obviously for the system so let's write it here the system so now I know the left hand side the left hand side becomes db system dt and this is defined 
for the Lagrangian reference frame. The, the first term on the right hand side, and you can see this, this is a derivative as well, right? But note that this is staying exactly where it is at. This is for the control volume. So that's the Eulerian. And that's the regular derivative that we are familiar with. So that's why I'm going to write over here. This will be del B C V del T. Why did I use del, not derivative? Because I don't know what a CV is a function of. If it's only a function of T, then I can write here D. But I don't know at this point. I'm doing a generalized uh, derivation. So the first two terms is fine. And now... I will just I will not be able to deal with the last term at this point in time. The next step will focus on these two last terms because there's something I need to look at. B1, T2, divided by delta T. So two out of three terms, I think I'm, do, I'm, I'm, I'm doing okay. I'm going to define Santos capital B divided by mass. And I want to now relate things. This is the extensive property. And the lowercase b is called intensive property. Per unit mass of the extensive property is equal to intensive property. Why do I do is, um, I'm going to give an example from thermodynamics. I'm not sure how much you remember. But when you look at the internal energy, lowercase u, when you look at the uh, enthalpy, h, these are all intensive properties. And if you look at the tables, it's like kilojoule per kilogram. That's why. I mean, nothing fancy going on. Once you know one, you can convert the other one by using it, the mass. I want to look at the first term. Limit as delta t goes to 0, b1, t2. That's what I want to analyze over here. So can I call this, the, because this is the inlet, I'm going to call this bi times mi. Do you see where it's coming from? So instead of writing bi or b1, Note that this is an inlet, right? It's in the inlet, 1, 2 is at the exit, right, or outlet. So that's why I'm calling I over here, and simply just the density, M, V. Right, can I do it? Oh yeah, why not? So from here you can get M, I is equal to density times volume, I, right? So far so good. Volume is going to be A, I. So let's go up here. I define the AI, right? So note that I'm defining AI over here. And this distance, like right in the middle of it, this distance is I'm going to call this XI. Okay? And I will do the same thing for the exit. And I'm going to call this XE because I define this as X direction right over here. So it becomes XI. This becomes X exit. AI times XI. Wait a second. Distance. How do I define the distance? You know this. Velocity times the time, right? Now this is going to be the velocity times delta t because we said that t2 is equal to t1 plus delta t. So let me write this nicely. There's a bunch of stuff that I need to insert. So over here, this mi becomes rho inlet and the volume was ai times xi, which is vi delta t. Limit delta t goes to zero. B 1 t2 by delta t will be, look at it, so it's going to be basically, I'm going to use this, okay, divide by delta t. So let's rewrite it, so it's going to be bi times rho i a i v i delta t by delta t, right? So can I cancel the delta t's? Oh yeah, I sure can, right? So then what I get here is, Basically, multiplication is do these four terms. And what was the multiplication of those four terms now? So bi times rho i times ai times vi. I'm going to call this b dot in. Okay. So this is basically, if you look at it, it is a time rate at which the b enters the control volume. As I cancel the delta d, so this becomes b dot, almost like the derivative. I'm not going to do the whole thing again for the exit, but I will write it because this has already been a long uh, segment. So it's going to be b2 t2 by delta t it will be guess what? Well, I can make an educated guess. It's going to be be rho e a e v e, and the multiplication of this will be this b dot at the exit. You can call it outlet or exit, it's up to you. And this is time rate at which B leaves the control volume. DB system DT 
will be equal to del b c v del t and I call this b dot exit minus b dot inlet. This is a time range of change inside of a closed system. This is in the Lagrangian reference frame. Okay, and the right hand side is a bit different now. It is a cha time change of B inside the control volume. And remember that I coincided my closed system and control volume at t is equal to t1. So that is also something to notice over here. Okay, and the, the last one is typically called as net flux of B across the control surface, which is the control volume boundary, right? So this is the net flux. Okay, and one thing important here though, these are in the Eulerian reference frame. Why? Because it's doing with the control volume. So it's staying exactly where it's at. The, the origin is outside the flow. With this, the origin is going with the flow. So that's a big deal between those two. So you note here, as I mentioned at the beginning of the segment, it's been a long segment, but I said that, hey, this Reynolds transport theorem converts properties from the Lagrangian reference frame to Eulerian reference frame. And you can see how it's accomplishing that now. This version of the RTT is called the general form. RTT. Okay. Actually, this is not the most common form of RTT that we will use. And I will write you the integral form, basically the integral form of RTT. So this is the more common. So dBdt, left hand side is the same. Now the right hand side, del del t is the same. So I'm going to keep del del t off. Now the BCV is, let me write it, I'll explain. This is a triple integral over the control volume because I'm writing the BV. So that's going to be B raw D volume. Okay, so where is this coming from? Remember, this is the intensive property, right? B rho times D volume. Let's go up here, I'll show you here. Look, same dot, nothing fancy. I'm just, I'm just rewriting this the way that I want to rewrite for this BCV. Okay, so this is not new. It looks scary with triple integral and all, but it's nothing uh, new over here. How about the other one? Now we are looking at the control surface. As I mentioned, it is the next net flux control surface. Now it's going to be B rho. And I had it actually up here, you see. Let me show you here. So I have this B rho A times V. Okay, now we're going to do a really smart way. The Reynolds has proposed this. Instead of writing it in two terms, we're going to put a dot product. I will explain how I V dotted with N DA. Okay, again, let's go back up. This V dot N, let me give you a hint. V dot N will be either a plus sign, plus V, or negative V. Okay, and once I obtain it, again, nothing fancy, is B times rho times A times V. Let's go down here. B times rho times V times A. Okay, so it's the same thing. I'm just rewriting an integral form. It's the same equation. And this is the one that I will be using throughout all the modules that is common.